Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this paper cutout style design in Adobe Illustrator. First, I'm going to show you how I created the background shapes because I've come up with a foolproof method of getting those layers in the right place the very first time. Then we'll make all the other things you see on the screen. Now, if you like learning about Illustrator, be sure and subscribe to my channel right now so you don't forget because I regularly post to tutorials about all things Adobe Illustrator. Now let's move to a blank document and we'll get started. I'll start out with the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, click on the artboard for the dialog box and type in 20 inches by 14 inches. That's the size of my artboard. I'll remove the fill color and then click on horizontal align center and vertical align center and then get the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut in, and I'm going to begin drawing around the inside of that rectangle, making smooth wavy lines. I don't want any sharp curves because we'll use the drop shadow and it doesn't work well with curves. As I get close to the starting point, my cursor changes and I have now a circle next to my pencil which tells me I am close enough that when I release my mouse Illustrator is going to join the start and end pieces seamlessly. Now I'll click on the return key on my keyboard to show you the settings I have for my pencil. I have the fidelity slider right in the center between accurate and smooth and I have these last two options checked and here we have 15 pixels in two. I'll say OK. And I'm going to drag out three more shapes. I don't want anything matchy matchy. Just makes it for a more interesting design if it's a little different on each layer. And we'll do one more here. And then I'll select all the layers, including the rectangle, go over to the Properties panel in the Pathfinder area, click on the ellipsis, and come down and click on Divide. Now anytime you use Divide, Illustrator groups the pieces, so we'll select them, go up to Object, and choose Ungroup. Now I'll apply color to each of the layers. I'll select the center one first. We'll do blue purple, green, orange, and yellow. And then I'll select all the pieces and remove the stroke color. Now to order these in that foolproof way I talked about at the beginning of the video, we'll go to the Layers panel, twirl this layer open, and I want you to be able to see these layers better. So I'll click on this top right corner in the pull down menu. I'll come down to the bottom and click on panel options and I'll check large and say OK. And that makes these a little bigger. Now I'll double click on the bottom layer, type in one and I'm going to number these from the bottom to the top and then press down with one and drag it above the five. That's staying in the layer and we'll just move these in order from the top down this time. This gets them exactly where I want them to be. I'll select all of them, go up to Effect, down to Stylize and choose Drop Shadow. I'm going to leave Mode on Multiply and my settings are at 100%. All of the rest of these are at 0.1 inch and I have Darkness at 100% checked and I'll say OK and that is how you very easily set up your layers and they come out right the first time. Now I'm going to hide this layer and we'll create a new layer to make our flower. So I'll get the ellipse tool. I'll click on the artboard for the dialog box and type in 2.75 by 0.4 inches and say OK. Then I want to add a point to the left anchor. So I'll go to the left toolbar, press down on the pen tool. In the flyout menu, I'll choose anchor point tool, keyboard shortcut, shift C. I'll click on that left anchor and that gives it a point. 
Then I've got to deselect the ellipse and select it again. Illustrator doesn't let me go directly from the anchor point tool to rotate, which is what we're going to do next. So we'll get the rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I'll hover over the pointed anchor, press down on the option key on my keyboard, then press down on the anchor, which opens the rotate dialog box. I'll type in 360 degrees divided by five. This tells Illustrator I want to end up with five equally spaced petals around the circle. Instead of pressing OK, I'll say copy. Then with the copy still selected, I'll duplicate the move three more times with the keyboard shortcut Command D, Command D, and Command D. Now I'll select the five petals and group them, object, group, and then I'll copy them. Edit, copy, or Command C, and paste the copy in place. Edit, paste in place, Shift, Command V. Now we'll change the color of the copy to orange and get the rotate tool keyboard shortcut R. Illustrator did not place the rotate ball in the center of my petals, so I'll hover over the center, press down with my mouse, and that moves the rotate ball where I want it. Then I can just grab an orange petal and drag slightly up, and then we'll make a copy of the orange, Command C, paste in place, Shift Command V, and change that color to red. The rotate tool is still active, so I'll grab that piece and rotate it. And now select all three colors and group them, object group. Now I'm going to make some copies and I want each one to be a little different. So I'll go up to effect, distort and transform, and we're going to use the transform effect. I'll change the scale horizontally to 80%, vertical 80%. I'll move one inch horizontally, one inch vertically, and then I'll skip all the way down to bottom and change copies to three and say OK. Now with those selected, I'll go up to Object, Expand Appearance, and then Object Ungroup. Now let's move back to the Layers panel, and we'll twirl this layer open. You can't tell by looking which one is which, but when you use the transform tool, the original is going to be on top. Now we'll number these layers from the bottom up like we did the layers before. I'll double click and type one, two, three, and four, and then I'll select layer two, and I'm going to delete it. Now we'll reorder these from the top down. So I'll move one up to the top, and then three goes underneath it and then select these pieces, move to the Properties panel, click on Horizontal Align Center and Vertical Align Center. Well, it doesn't look like our flower yet, but it soon will. I'll go back to the Layers panel, click on Layer 3, get the Rotate Tool, Keyboard Shortcut R. This time, Illustrator places the Rotate Ball in the center, so all I have to do is grab hold of that layer and just drag it around. My goal is to get the yellow away from that back yellow. Then I'll select layer one. The rotate tool is still active, so all I have to do is drag and there we go. Now I'll select layer four. That's the back layer because it's at the bottom of this list. Go up to effect. Stylize, Drop Shadow, I'll leave the settings at 100% and 0.1 and say OK. Then I'll select Layer 3, hold down the Shift key so I can also select Layer 1. Go back to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and we'll drop this back to 50, 0.05 and 0.05 and say OK. And then I'll group these, Command G, and that gives us our flower. Now I'll create another layer and we'll make our heart. Look at the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M. This is going to be 3.25 by 1.5. I'm going to leave it red 
get the direct selection tool and grab hold of one of the little corner widgets and drag to the center and that rounds all of the corners. I'll get the rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and hold down the shift key and drag up. The shift key constrains the rotations at 45 degrees, and so when I'm there, I'll just release my mouse, and then I'm going to click back down on this object and begin dragging the other direction. As soon as I start dragging, but not before, I'll hold the Option key down to make a copy and the Shift key to constrain again to 45 degree increments. This time I'll rotate 90 degrees and release my mouse. I'll select both pieces and go to the left toolbar and get the Shape Builder tool, keyboard shortcut Shift M. I'll hold the Option key down and Illustrator removes any pieces that I drag over and then I'll release the Option key and drag over all of the pieces I want to keep and Illustrator joins them. Now I want to split my heart in half so I'll get the Rectangle tool, Keyboard Shortcut M, I'll move my cursor above the center of the heart and drag out a rectangle then select the heart and the rectangle, go back to the Properties panel, back to the Pathfinder area, click that ellipsis. I wish that would stay open, and click Divide again. Now remember with Divide, I have to ungroup everything, so I'll select those, go to Object and Ungroup, and then I can drag this piece away. Now my heart is in two pieces. I'll change the color of the right side, to orange. Now I'll select and make a copy of the heart using the reflect tool. It's behind the rotate tool on the left toolbar. Keyboard shortcut is O. I'll hover over the center of the heart, hold down the option key, click down with my mouse, and notice Illustrator changed colors because I have vertical checked. Make sure you have vertical, then instead of OK, press copy. Now I'll select just the right side and grab hold of the center right anchor and drag about a third of the way to the left. And then I'll do the same thing on the left. And then we'll apply some drop shadows. So I'll select the two pieces on the right, go up to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, I'll leave the settings the same here, then select the left side, Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. This time I'll make a slight change because I want the Drop Shadow on this side to go to the left. So I'll come to the X Offset. When I have a positive number, my Drop Shadow horizontally moves to the right. But if I put a negative number here, my drop shadow is going to move to the left. And just for future reference, your Y offset determines the vertical movement of the drop shadow. A positive number causes the drop shadow to move down, and a negative number causes the drop shadow to move up. I'll leave all the rest of the settings the same, and say OK. Then I'll apply a little gradient to the two front pieces. I'll select the piece on the right, go to the left toolbar, and double click on the gradient tool. And then on the gradient slider, I'll click to get some color stops. I'll double click on the left one and change that to red, and double click the right one and change that to orange. And I want mostly red showing, so I'll drag this little diamond a little bit to the right. That gives us a little gradient of the orange on the outside. Now let's do something similar on the left. Click on the slider. I want mostly orange showing here, so I'll move the diamond to the left and we'll leave it like that. Now I'll group these, Command G, and for the bow, I'll get the ellipse tool. You can just freehand this if you want. Click on the artboard and I'll make this point 
0.65 by 0.3. We'll remove the fill color and change the stroke to yellow and five points. And I want to point this corner so again we get that anchor point tool, keyboard shortcut, shift C, click here to make that pointed, then deselect it, select it again, and get the reflect tool, keyboard shortcut O, hover over the pointed anchor, hold down the option key and click down with the mouse, verticals checked, say copy, and that's how easy that is. When you get in the habit of using the keyboard shortcuts, you'll discover how much faster you can do things. All right, now we're going to use the pencil tool to create some little ties. So I'll just drag out one piece from the center and then select that piece. Get the reflect tool again, keyboard shortcut O, hover over the top center anchor, hold down the option key, click down with my mouse, say copy, and then let's make the ties rounded on the edge. I'll select them, come over and click on the word stroke, and choose round cab. Now I'll group these, command G, and drag this over here with the heart. Then for my letters, I'll get the type tool and click on the artboard for some placeholder text. I'm going to change the font to Astounder Squared BB and the size to 250 points and press the return key. Now this is another one of those fonts you can download for free if you're a Creative Cloud subscriber. Well, I'm going to type the word O and then select it come over to the left toolbar. The fill color is active. I'm going to remove the fill by clicking here on none. And I've now removed the fill, but I still have the letters. So I'll come over to the properties panel in the appearance area. I'll click on this ellipsis to open the appearance panel. And this is where we not only add the fill back, but we add our effects. And what we create is going to be editable. So I'll go to the bottom bar and click on Add New Fill, and then we'll change the color to blue and come up to the Stroke layer, and I'll add a yellow stroke and type in 20 points, and now we have our stroke. It doesn't look right until we select it, and then I'll drag it down underneath the Fill layer, and that looks much better. Now with the word selected, I'll click on the fill layer, go to effect, stylize, drop shadow. I'll change the value here to 75%, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, and say OK. And then with it still selected, select the stroke layer. Go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and I'll change this to 100%. Leave the rest of the settings the same and say OK. Now let's move these over here out of the way. And unhide the previous layer. I'll select the green layer to activate that green fill color. Then we'll get the blob brush. It's behind the paintbrush tool on the left side, keyboard shortcut, Shift B. Now to change the size of the brush, I can either use the left square bracket to make it smaller, the right square bracket to make it larger, or I can press the return key and change it here. I can drag the slider or I can type in the size I want. I'm going to leave this at 15 points and say OK. Then I'll drag over here to the left. And I want you to notice that instead of seeing the blob brush, you're seeing an X where my cursor is. And that's because I don't have the caps lock press down on my keyboard. That's going to work for the blob brush, for the paint brush, 
and for the pencil tool. So if you're seeing an X and you want to see the actual tool, just click the caps lock. Now I'll draw a little squiggly line here for a leaf and do another one here. I'm going to line those up a little better. There. Now I'll select all of the green pieces. I'll hold down the shift key so I can select multiples at the same time. Then we'll move to the properties panel and click to unite. Well, Illustrator united the pieces, but something doesn't look right. So let's move to the layers panel and see what happened. We'll twirl this open and see that Illustrator created basically a new layer with all those pieces and moved it to the top. Well, I want to renumber it so I can get it in the right place. I'll double click and type in three and then drag it back where it was. Come up to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. And the only change I need to make here is 0.1. 0.1 and 0.1 and say OK. Now that looks better. All right, let's drag the little flower and place it here on the stem. And then I want some grass around the bottom of my stem. So I'll select the layer. I'm going to get the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut in. And the important thing to remember is you have to start and stop right on the edge of the layers. So I'll start right on the edge, drag some pieces here, select it again, get the pencil tool again, and do the same thing on this side. Here we go. Now we'll grab the heart and place it here, get the pencil tool, keyboard shortcut in, and I'll remove the fill color, change the stroke to our yellow, and five points matches the bow. I'll start here and just drag a little line up. I want the line underneath the yellow layer and underneath the heart. So we go to the layers panel and it's even up in a different layer. I can select it and drag it down underneath this layer. And now it's behind the heart and behind the yellow layer. If you'd like to know even more about how to use layers in Illustrator, I'm going to leave a link to a tutorial at the end of this video. And I highly suggest you check that out next because you can do so much with layers. Now let's move the bow and place it here on the center. Then I'll hold down the shift key and select my little string here and apply a drop shadow. I think 50% is going to be enough. We'll say OK. And then I'll grab my letter, hold down the Option key, and drag out two copies, and change this to Oh Happy Day. Arrange these. And that completes our project. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and learned some things about not only creating the paper cutout style, but using some of the other tools in Adobe Illustrator. Now, let me remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future tutorials. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.